Hi, in this episode we'll be focusing on monosaccharides and more specifically galactose, glucose and fructose. Okay, so let's begin by drawing galactose. Step number one, draw a vertical line. Step number two, draw four horizontal lines. Step number three, place the functional group at the top. Step number four, give it a tail, which is a CH2OH. Step number five, place the HOs on the central carbon, so that's one, two, three, three and four. And then place the remaining alcohol functional groups on the carbons that don't have them. And finish off with hydrogens either side. And there you have it. This is the structure for galactose. Each of these intersections represents a chiral carbon. So just by looking at what we call a Fischer projection, so this is a Fischer. By looking at this Fischer projection, we can see that we have one, two, three, four intersections, which each represent a chiral carbon. So galactose has four chiral carbon centers. One of the other things that you need to be aware of is how to work out whether you're looking at D or L galactose. You may recall from your lectures that D stands for dextrorotary, which means that it will bend light to the right versus L, which is levorotary, which bends polarized light to the left. In order to work this out, you will need to look for the functional group. And in this case, it's the aldehyde functional group at the top and then count the furthest chiral carbon away from there. So one, two, three, four, and look for the OH. It's on the right, which makes this D galactose. Okay, well, let's now draw D glucose. Same principle, draw a vertical line down. And again, four horizontal lines. Give it a head. CHO, tail, CH2OH, and then we're going to put the hydroxyl groups in. Okay, just one HO on the left on carbon number three, which means the remaining hydroxyl groups must be on the right. So just to reiterate that whenever you have a hydroxyl group on one side, you have a hydrogen on the other. So this is the structure for glucose. And again, it's a Fischer projection. Each of the intersections representing a chiral carbon center. So we've got four chiral carbons in glucose. Okay, let's work out whether this is D or L glucose. So there's our functional group. Our furthest chiral carbon happens to be here. Looking to the right, there's our OH. So the OH is on the right, which means that this is D glucose. Okay, let's move on to fructose. Again, draw a straight line down, but in this case, only three horizontal lines, one, two, and three. Now what I'd like you to do is copy what we have on those three horizontal lines with regards to glucose. So we've got a HO there, we've got a hydrogen there, a hydrogen there, a hydrogen there, an OH there, an OH there. Copy the bottom, CH2, OH. Okay, and this is where it gets a little bit different. See this horizontal line here, it becomes a double bonded oxygen, which means that we're now looking at a ketone. And all we're gonna do is place a head and in this case, we've got a CH2OH. So the head and the tail in this example are exactly the same. The biggest difference, of course, is that this is a ketone. While these guys were all aldehydes. Okay, so there's our structure for fructose. And again, it's a Fischer projection. And again, the intersections represented here, 
uh, one intersection so that's where a vertical line crosses a horizontal one two three so this has three chiral carbon centers is it D or L functional group at the top well in this case actually it's the ketone so it's towards the top so the furthest chiral carbon away from the ketone functional group happens to be one two three look to the right there's the OH which makes it D fructose so what else is important well you need to also be aware of how to categorize that's right you need to be aware how to categorize these monosaccharides each of these has six carbons one two three four five six those intersections recall are carbons so each of these happens to be a hexose so that's a hexose which means it's a monosaccharide that contains six carbons And you need to be aware of the functional group. So this is an aldehyde, which makes this an aldohexose. This is an aldehyde, which makes this an aldohexose. Whereas this is a ketone. So this guy is a ketohexose. You will see very quickly that both glucose and galactose both belong to this family called aldohexoses, whereas fructose is a ketone, so the prefix is keto and the ending is hexose, meaning it's got six carbons. We'll look at a couple more examples. Okay, so here's a quick table that will help you classify different monosaccharides according to the functional group number of carbons. So if we have an aldehyde functional group, six carbons becomes an aldo from aldehyde, and number six, hexose, which tells us it's a monosaccharide with six carbons and has an aldehyde functional group. What about if we still had an aldehyde functional group but we had five carbons? Well, it'd still be an aldehyde, so aldo, followed by pentose. Again, if we have an aldehyde functional group and we have four carbons, becomes an aldo tetrose. So tetra for four tetros mean it's a monosaccharide with four carbons. And if we had three carbons again it would be aldo followed by tri for three and then os for sugar or in this case monosaccharide so an aldo triose. We could do the same thing for ketones as well. So ketone would have that functional group, which is the carbonyl group that will be located between carbons. Okay, so if we've got a ketone functional group on a monosaccharide, and that monosaccharide happens to have six carbons, then it's going to be called a keto a keto hexose. And for five keto pentose four keto tetros and finally for three we would have a keto trio signifying that we have three carbons within a monosaccharide that has a ketone functional group